Getting commercial technology adopted and to the warfighter quickly is the focus of the Defense Innovation Unit. The DIU works with partners within the DOD and across government to prototype, field, and scale commercial solutions. Here to talk about their fiscal 2021 annual report is Mike Matson. He's the Deputy Director at the Defense Innovation Unit. Mike, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mimi. Thanks for having me. So DIU is a relatively new organization uh, within the DOD. What motivated the creation of it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, DO, DIU was started in 2015 by then Secretary of Defense Ash Carter as a way to illuminate a path for non-traditional companies to do business with DOD. Uh, the commercial sector outspends government by about $250 billion in R&D every year, research and development every year, and there's a recognition that there was no easy way to get this leading edge technology into the department. So DIU was really created to lower a lot of those barriers to entry to the defense marketplace, uh, barriers such as uh, the expense to do business, the time involved to do business. A lot of non-traditional early stage tech companies uh, didn't have the capital or the time to uh, uh, wait for uh, multi multiple years for contracting, so they had to uh, find a way to uh, get them in much more quickly. So let's talk about the process itself. <clears throat> How do you connect the Defense Department with these innovative um, small companies? Well, what we do, uh, we've developed uh, two internal teams. We have a defense engagement team and a commercial engagement team. And every project we have starts with our DOD partner, with a demand signal uh, and a problem they're trying to solve. And we curate their problem down to a, a simply stated problem statement, half a page or a paragraph. And we get rid of the acronyms. We get rid of the uh, Pentagon E's and put it in terms that the tech uh, industry understands. At the same time, we have a commercial engagement team that is engaging with the commercial ecosystem to understand where the investment is taking place in those uh, uh, leading edge technology development areas, where the VCs are investing their money, uh, and then we just determine if there is a commercial solution uh, that through minor customization, proving through prototyping, will solve our DOD problem. So you're actually out there looking for these companies. They're not coming to you necessarily. Uh, we do have companies that come to us, but we are also out in the ecosystem to uh, see where the in investment is. So in fiscal 2021, uh, DIU delivered 35 capabilities. Can you um, tell us a little bit about some of the more notable ones? Uh, you bet. And one thing uh, from our FY21 report that is, is very clear is that the experiment that uh, then Secretary of Defense Ash Carter started is working. Um, but there's a lot of work still to be done on that. And one of those is continuing the prototyping uh, process. Uh, and we look at uh, across the tech sectors, and I'll use an example of AI and some of the companies we've put on contract there. Uh, so we look to leverage the development in uh, the commercial AI to solve problems and to use that AI technology to make better, faster decisions. Okay, some but isn't the traditional defense space already doing that? I mean, everybody's doing AI, it seems. Uh, they are now, but what we do is we do it much faster, and okay. we're able to, instead of uh, developing something organically, we leverage what they've done. For example, with AI, uh, the commercial sector has solved the problem on predictive maintenance years ago. We were able to uh, quickly adapt that and bring that in and apply it to uh, platforms across the Air Force as well as the other services. But we're also able to look at that same type of rapid decision-making assistance and apply it to other things. It takes a little more customization and a little more prototyping. One of our uh, recently transitioned projects is using AI to help determine uh, hypersonic missile tracking and be able to make those decisions much more quickly. And in fact, we transitioned that project uh, with our DOD partner to a uh, half a billion dollar uh, contract after the prototyping. You mentioned transitioning, because that's really the most important right. part, right? So you, you take the capability, you <clears throat> at scale, which is important, it's not right. just a prototype, across the valley of death into a program of record. How do you facilitate that? Uh, Mimi, you're exactly right. Transition is our most important uh, mission, and that is the metric th that we track the most closely. Getting technology into the hands of our men and women in uniform is our ultimate goal. And so what we did is uh, a couple years ago, we examined our transition rate, and that was when we stood up those two internal teams that I mentioned before. So that before we even take on a project, we work with our DOD partner to determine what is the transition plan. How are we gonna transition this to a production contract or a program of record and move it forward in, in that direction? You know, I, I wanna ask you about some of the recipients of the contract awards, the companies that you're working with. Nearly three quarters are small businesses <clears throat> and then 86% are non-traditional. 
How do you define non-traditional? Uh, that's right. It's actually uh, defined in the FARN. It's a company that has not had a contract uh, within the last year. And our uh, statute, the authority for us to operate, specifically targets non-traditional companies to bring them in. So that's intentional. It is absolutely intentional because uh, I think there's a recognition that sometimes that's where the, uh, the agility is. Uh, but there's also provisions to work with our traditional defense industrial base partners as well in partnership, uh, systems integrators. But look, modernization uh, of the department is going to take all players. So we want to leverage the non-traditionals, the traditionals, the small business, uh, the systems integrators, all in that effort to get the best technology uh, that we can across the country into the hands of our men and women in uniform. So what will the focus be for this fiscal year? <clears throat> So this fiscal year, uh, we talk about this era of great power competition. But what we're also really good at is cooperation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to keep on doing what we do. We're going to keep on getting that technology uh, into DOD as quickly as we can. But we've also shifted to a regional focus now so that we can align the DOD innovation entities in the regions. Uh, and we also demystify how to work with DOD in those regions uh, and very specifically working with folks. And then finally, we're exploring ways to work more closely with our partners and allies. Um, look, uh, technology is democratized, uh, and technology development is happening around the world. And we want to work with our combatant command partners, our uh, partner and allied nation uh, friends, and to develop that technology and get it into our combined forces as quickly as possible. Mike, thank you so much for being on the program. Nice to talk to you. Great. Thank you, Mimi.